missed it. I know I'm the best hitter in the world. I'm anointed to be the best hitter in the world. Start to. I'm anointed to be the best hitter in the world. I know I am. I'm anointed to be the best hitter in the world. I know I can do it. Strike three. Little boy shouted, praise God. I'm anointed to be the best pitcher in the world. <laughs> Amen. If you think about it, it'll hit you. <laughs> Amen. What a joy to be together. Amen. Amen. What a joy to know the Lord. As I preached here last week, if you missed it, you go on YouTube and watch it. You missed the blessing. Amen. I preached on the horn. Amen. The anointing. I preached on the sword of the Lord, and I preached on the white robe. Amen. Oh, my, what a powerful message and anointing fell in the house of God. But, amen, we can't move on last week's anointing. We can't operate on yesterday's anointing. We have to work on today's anointing. Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles, amen. First of all, I want you to say this. Read this. Fresh oil from heaven. Jesus, I pray for a fresh oil on all my life and on my walk and on my calling. That's what each and every one of us needs in here today. We need fresh oil. We need a fresh anointing in our lives. Amen. We need God more now than ever. <coughs> you need Him in your life. Oh, praise God. We see it last week that Saul, he was rejected as king. David was anointed as king. We see, amen, that so many people here today, I can feel, are living in the past. You're letting your past hold you back from your present and from the future that God has for you. You're letting your past keep you from doing what God would have you to do. Well, brother, you sure have been preached on that a lot here lately. Well, I tell you, some people must not have gotten it. Because God has just kept leading me back to that thought, amen. God just kept taking me back to those people that need to move on and people that need to get over things that have happened in the past and continue forward for the Lord. Because there's so many things that can hold us back, amen. Oh, who's got something holding them back? A few of us? All right. Hopefully today it won't be, amen. Hopefully today you will get past it, amen. <coughs> Praise God. Let's all say it. Oh, thank God, thank God. Now touch somebody beside you and say, sometimes you just have to move on. Amen. Thank God for being born again and spirit filled. Thank God for what He can do for us. Amen. If you got your Bible, turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I just need a starting point this morning. This may sound a little familiar, but it may be the shortest message I've ever preached. And the church said, Amen. <laughs> but then again, it may not be. Preaching on the Verse 8 to 16, don't get a reading in verse number 1. Turn around and shake somebody's hand. Let them know you're glad you're here this morning. I'm glad everybody's here. I thank God for each and every soul. Thank God for our visitors. Thank God for those of you who have been here since I had. Thank God for each and every one. First Samuel chapter 16, beginning in verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I am come the sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. 
And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the reading of your word. We thank you for each and every soul that is here today. We pray, God, that you would just move in a mighty way. That you speak to each and every heart that's here. And God, I praise you and I glorify you. Because I know, Lord, that you've got something for everybody that's here today. If they'll just put the things of this world outside their mind for this short time that we're gathered together. And they'll concentrate on what you have for them. Father, I pray if there be one here today that's lost, that they'll get saved. If there's one backslidden, that they'll be reclaimed. And I pray most of all that you speak to them, Lord, into their heart. And God, I give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name I pray. Amen and amen. We see our text today is very historic. Amen. We see that Samuel is going to be anointing David as king. That Saul has been rejected. Amen. But we see, we wanted to look at last week, and I looked on anointing, and, and the anointing that God has, amen, it's not always poured out of a bottle as I did last week over your head. The anointing, amen, is the Holy Ghost. The anointing is the power of God. We can look at anointing on a personal level. Amen. Because each and every one of us need the anointing. If you don't have the anointing of God, you can't preach. If you don't have the anointing of God, you can't get up here and sing a spirit-filled song. If you don't have the anointing of God in your life, you can't do anything for Him. You need the anointing. Yes. Oh, we see, amen, that anointing means to be singled out. We see that in the Word of God... In the New Testament, all of Christ's disciples are said to be anointed. They're set apart. They are commissioned of God. Amen. Anointing. We see the anointing. 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 20. Now he which established up with you in Christ hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Thank God. Now he who establishes or has established us in Christ hath anointed us is God. God is the one that anoints you. Amen. God is the one, amen, that establishes us in Christ. God is the one oh my, that all the power from above comes from. Amen. amen. God is all powerful. I thank God that he is but he has sealed us and given us the earnest. That word earnest there, it means he's given us the down payment of the spirit in our hearts. Jesus said he would go away, but he would not leave us comfortless, that he would send a comforter. And thank God that God sent a comforter through the Holy Ghost. He sent us the Spirit. Amen. He sent us that down payment. He sent us, amen. Oh, wow. The, oh, the down payment of the Spirit, the earnest of the Spirit, which is, means a pledge. Amen. Thank God that he's given us a pledge. He's given us the power of the Spirit of God to get through the things that we have to go through in this life. We were talking in Sunday school. How would you have gotten through many of the things you've had to go through in this life without the down payment, without the earnest of the Spirit, without the Holy Ghost? You couldn't. How could you get through all the things you've had to lose in life, the suffering, the pain, the sadness, without the Spirit of God, without the power of God? Amen. We have been set apart for God's service. Amen. If you are one of God's anointed, if you're saved, amen, you have been set apart for God's service. Thank God that you have, amen. Thank God that you have. We see that there is a whole lot required out of us. If you've been set apart for God's service and you've been saved, the Word of God tells us, amen, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required. And to whom I have committed much, of him they will ask the more. We see that much has been committed unto us. We see the blood of Jesus Christ, the earnest of the Spirit, if you're saved, has been committed unto you. You have got him dwelling in you. There's a lot required out of you, Christian. There's a lot required because when much is given, much is required. People 
will expect a lot out of you, will they not? Do people expect us Christians to be just like they are? Amen. People will, even more, they will be putting you under a microscope even more. They'll be watching you even more. When you're spirit-filled, amen, thank God people's going to know that there's something different. When you're a Holy Ghost, yeah. people's going to know that there's something different about you. You're not going to operate on the same level. You're not going to live on the same level. You're going to be, oh my, you're going to be saved. You're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're going to be shouting and rejoicing. You're going to praise God in every situation that you find yourself in. Because it takes the Spirit in order to do that. Amen. We know you have to have the Spirit of God. Amen. You have to have. The Spirit equips us. The Spirit enables us. The Spirit empowers us to do all the things that we do. Amen. Without the Spirit, what would we be? The Bible tells us what we'd be. Without the Spirit, we would be none of His. Amen. Thank God that he left us the Spirit. Thank God that he sent the Comforter. Are you glad? Amen. Are you glad? Amen. You may be here today and you're not saved. You don't even know what I'm talking about, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. You may not even know what it feels like to be filled with the Spirit. Oh, but you can. Oh, thank God you can. Amen. Oh, because God, He wants us to be filled. He doesn't want us to just be floundering through this life. He wants us to be living a purpose-driven life. And our purpose here is to tell other people about Jesus. Our purpose here is to tell others, amen, about the Comforter, about what Christ did on the cross, about what He's done in your life and what He's doing and what He's going to do. John 14, 26 and 27, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Oh, thank God, amen. The peace that we as Christians can have is not the peace that we can, that the world can give us. Amen. The, the, the peace that the world can give us can be taken away. Yes. Amen. But the peace that God can give us and does give us as Christians, amen. Oh, thank God. It won't be taken away. Amen. amen. He left his peace with us. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't worry about it. So many people are worried about things that they shouldn't even worry about. Because you can't change what happened in your life yesterday. Amen. You can't change what happened this morning. When you left the house arguing with your wife, your husband, threatening your kids, you're going to beat them if they don't get out of bed. Amen. My mom and daddy used to do the same thing to me. Thank God I like to be in church now. Amen. Thank God I like to be here. I don't have to be made. Amen. I want to be here because I love the Spirit of God that I feel. I love that anointing that I feel. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So many people are afraid of things that have not even happened yet. Anybody ever been afraid of something that's not happened yet? Yeah, yeah. Old devil, man, he wants you to be afraid. Old devil wants you to live in fear. Things you've got no control of. The, the, God tells us not to even take no thought for tomorrow. You don't even have to worry about tomorrow what you should eat or what you should drink or what clothes you should put on. You don't even, you shouldn't even worry about it. Tomorrow may never come. Because we don't have the promise of tomorrow. You don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But when you're filled with the Spirit and have the Holy Ghost dwelling in you, amen, you know that He is in total control. Amen. Oh, I'm glad that He's got the whole world in His hand. Amen. Come on, sing it with me. Y'all know it. He's got the whole world in His hands. He's got the whole world in His hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got the whole world.
your life, what a difference that makes. Amen. Amen. It changes you. It says, the Bible tells us, behold, old things are passed away. All things have become new. That stuff that you thought about worrying you so much, that stuff that has kept you from serving God, that stuff that has kept you from coming to an altar and getting saved, that stuff in your past that everybody reminds you about, God forget about it. You accept Jesus Christ, He's done forgot about it. It's forgotten as far as the east is from the west. As long as you're going east, you're always going east. As long as you're going west, you're always going west. It's forgotten. Under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why in the world do we let the devil keep bringing up our past? Why in the world do we let our past keep worrying us the way that we do? Anybody let your past worry? Amen. People, if, oh, I've done so and so wrong. Well, I've done so many people wrong. I can't even remember them all. That's why I don't even care anymore. The past is past. God forgive me. Amen. You look at somebody who wasn't always a preacher. You look at somebody who's a drug dealer. You look at somebody who wasn't very nice. You look at somebody that stayed drunk all the time. You look at somebody, amen, that, oh, my, I thank God I can stand here and say, I've been born again. Amen. I've been spirit-filled. I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, my past don't bother me anymore. People may throw it up in my face, but it don't bother me because it's under the blood. Amen. Amen. What I was is not what I am, and it's not what I'm going to be. Amen. amen. Thank God. But we let the devil keep us in the past so much. You know, because people won't ever forget, will they? You remember that time? Oh, that's some of the worst words. You remember that time when we... I do, but let me tell you about that time that I come to know Jesus. Amen. Amen. I do remember that time we... But let me tell you about Jesus. Oh, my, that makes all the difference in the world, amen. We need to be spirit-filled. We need to be equipped, amen, because the Word of God tells us that, guess what? If you don't have the Spirit, you're not here. The Romans 8 and 9 tells you that. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you're saved... <laughs> If you're claiming salvation, amen, we see, but you're not controlled, the NLT says it, but if you're not controlled by your simple nature, you're controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God living in you, and remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. If you don't have the Spirit in you, then you don't belong to Him at all. You get saved, you've got the Spirit. You've got the indwelling of the Spirit. But how many of you have gave everything to God? Who's holding on to things? I don't even, I don't even raise your hand. There's people that hold on to things. Amen. God doesn't want just the parts you want to give Him. God wants all of you. God wants you to surrender all. You say, well, it's baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, I, I hadn't even so much heard of it. Well, I tell you, hearing about today, baptism of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's something we believe in, amen. That's a real thing. It's not just something people talk about. Amen, that's something we believe in. Amen. Oh, thank God, amen. Because if you have not the Spirit, you're not of His, but have you gave everything to Him? A lot of people, as I said here the other night, you don't want to pay the price of Pentecost. You don't want to pay the price to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't want to get rid of the things that you're holding on to that's becoming between you and the fullness of Christ. Oh, amen, brother. You don't want to give up that sin that you're secretly holding on to. It's not secret, by the way. God knows it. Why do you think you've not experienced the full blessings of God? Amen. <laughs> that bitterness you're holding on to, that addiction you're holding on to, oh, that sinful thought life you're holding on to. Amen. Have you gave yourself completely and fully to God? Do you even want the anointing that God has for you? Do you even want the Holy Ghost? Do you want to be filled up? Do you want to be running over in the Spirit? Or are you happy just sitting here playing your part one day a week? A lot of people are. 
A lot of people are. But I want the fullness of God. I want everything that God has for me. Do you only want part? Do you want to be, but who in here wants to be partially blessed? Who in here wants to be fully blessed? Well, it takes full submission Amen. unto God to be fully blessed. If you're not doing what God commands you to do, then you're not going to be fully blessed. Amen. Oh, we see we have to have the Holy Ghost to function. First John 2 and 20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. We see an unction. There's so many people that are trying to function without an unction. Unction means an anointing. Unction means the Holy Ghost anointing. Amen. That's what unction means. Oh, and <laughs> we see, amen, in the Greek, charisma. Amen. We see that we get our word charismatic. We get our word from that. It's an unction or a spirit, a special endowment of the Holy Spirit, an anointing. Amen. We've got an unction. If you're saved, you've got an unction to function. You've got to have that anointing of God in order to do anything for God. Amen. We can do a lot in our own selves. We can do a lot in our own power. But I tell you, your power will run out. His power never runs out. Amen. Oh, thank God. When the unction is in it, and the anointing of God is in it, it will succeed. Anything you do in the name of the Lord, if you're functioning with the unction, amen, it will succeed. If you're functioning without the unction, it won't succeed. Amen. So many people want to live in sin. And they want things to prosper and go their way. Well, if you're living in sin, that's not what the Word of God says. Go back and read Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, 1 through 6, and you'll see exactly how God ordained things. Amen. You have to stay in the Word of God. When you're in the Word of God, when you meditate on it day and night, you're going to be like a tree planted beside a river of water. Amen. It's going to spring forth and bear fruit in its season. But if you're not... That's not the way it is with the wicked. You can read that on yourself. That's a whole other message. The wicked, amen. Guess what? If you're not saved, you're wicked. Right. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, who, who are you serving? Who's your master this morning? If it's not God, then who is it? You're either, there's no such thing as being, well, I'm a good person. I'm halfway saved. Well, if you're halfway saved, you're all the way lost. Yeah, halfway saved people don't make it to heaven. Amen. Good people, a lot of good people are burning in hell. They came to church every Sunday, but they never came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. They never came to know Him. Now they came and they knew about Him, they learned a lot about Him, but they never came to know Him. Any preacher worth anything always brings you, I preach this, I harp it, that way you'll know a good preacher and then you'll know a bad one. Any preacher worth listening to will always bring you to a point of decision. A cross in the road. I'm going to follow Jesus or I'm going to go my way. And that my way, there, there's a way which seems right. Now there is a way which seems right. I went to the beach one time, and this was before there was such thing as GPS and TripAdvisor and all that. And to go, it took me and some friends of mine, it took us 16 hours to get to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Y'all know that at the most, that's an eight-hour drive. There was a way that seemed right. I thought I was going the right way. But in reality, I was headed in the opposite direction, and I didn't know until I stopped at a gas station and asked somebody how to get to Myrtle Beach, and they said, man, you are going the wrong way. There may be people in here today that are going the wrong way. There may be people in here today that are not functioning with an unction. There may be people in here today that's not saved. You're headed in what seems like the right direction, but you're not headed towards heaven. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That means that that seem right way is not going to get you there. If I would have kept going the way I was going, I would have ended up in Texas. But I had to turn around. 
Amen. I had to turn around. Not do a 360. I did a 180. I headed back the opposite direction. And then I finally got there eight hours late. Amen. But God is, could be giving you the opportunity today to turn completely around and head towards heaven. You may have been living in a way that you think is right. You may have been living in a way that seems good. I'm a good person. I've never killed anybody. Boy, have I had a dollar for every time I heard that. I'm a good person. I've never killed anybody. I, I, had a, I don't do people wrong. If that could get you to heaven, Jesus would never have had to have died on the cross. Jesus would never have had to die. It took the blood of Jesus. But there are people, no doubt, sitting here that are continuing to live in sin that are going to think, well, I'm okay. And then that trumpet's going to sound. You're going to draw your last breath and you're going to find out how okay you really are. God is a just God. Amen. If you choose to live in sin, that's your choice. I can't do anything about it. All I can do is preach the word of God. If you choose to live in sin, that's your choice. But guess what? You're going to get exactly what you deserve. Amen. I told a story this morning about people I know sitting in jail right now. Want me to pray for them to be set free. Well, they're sitting in jail today. But God probably set them free. <laughs> Just in a different way. He got them where he needs them. But where he'll have to listen. Amen. Where they have to listen to him. Thank God. Amen. God knows what we need. God knows what sin you're holding on to. God knows, amen, if you're trying to function without an unction. If you're just going on your own power, amen. Oh. Say this to yourself. Say it. I'm anointed. Boy, if that's all the people in here, let me put it another way. Even if it's a lie or not, Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Oh, that sounded bad. <laughs> Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. See, now God anoints you to fulfill what he has you to do. Amen. It feels good, doesn't it, to say you're anointed. But just imagine if you really are anointed, it feels even better. Amen. When you're really anointed of God and you get excited about the things of God and you're ready to charge hell with a water pistol and you're ready to pick up your cross and carry it, then to be anointed, amen, really begins to mean something. Amen. When you're anointed of God, you can take on the devil himself. Look at this, John 14 12, barely, barely. That means listen up! Barely, barely, listen. This is important, by the way. That's what that means. <coughs> I say unto you, he that believes on me, this is Jesus saying this. He that believes on me, the works that I shall do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You read about the great works that Jesus did? What's he saying? You can do those too, and even greater. What is stopping us from that? Faith. You're focused on stuff. We get focused on stuff. We're not worried about functioning with the unction. We're just worried about functioning. Well, Monday's going to be here, and I'm going to have to go back to the old grindstone. I'm going to have to go back to school. I'm going to have to go back to work. Same old stuff over and over every week. Life comes. Life goes. Boy, that's a sad way to live. Today could be your last day. Today could be the last day I'm able to walk. I got all kinds as I told you in Sunday, I got all kinds of negative things towards myself today. I hope none of it happens, but if it does, I'm still going to praise God in it. Amen. Because I took advantage of every day that I've been able to walk. Yes. Amen. God says we could do greater things. But we so many times get caught up in stuff. Our lives are so busy. How busy is your life? Everybody got a busy life? We got so much going on, man. We don't have time to do stuff. How many of you? Oh, don't even raise your hand. You should be praying a whole lot more than you are. Let me go ahead and put that out there. I already know we all. I'm hold up my hand. We all need to pray more. Amen. I already know. I hold up my hand. We all need to read our word more. 
I already know that I, we all, need more of the function of the unction. Amen. We all need to be operating in the spirit more than we are right now. Amen. We see that Christ is in us. Amen. We see that he is in us. Oh, my. The voice you believe will determine the future that you experience. How many of you ever talk to yourself? Whether out loud or in your mind, if you talk to yourself out loud, you might need to go see a counselor. But... No, no I just... But every one of us in here, we talk to ourselves in our minds, don't we? We do. And our voice in our minds tells us things, doesn't it? Sometimes that voice is not of God, is it? Sometimes that voice is of the devil. Other times that voice is of God. But the voice you believe, that will determine your future. It will. Because, you know, here is a fact. This is a fact. That people believe very little of what you tell them. You try it out and see. People believe very little of what you tell them. Some of you don't believe what I'm telling you here today, but I, and it's, I know that. But they believe everything that they tell themselves. <laughs> do you believe everything you tell yourself? Yeah, you do. Do you believe everything that everyone else tells you? No, just that's my children. They don't believe nothing I say. Hey, I don't know nothing. I'm dumb as a rock. 45 years old, ain't never been done, done nothing. Ain't never been through nothing. Don't know nothing. Four years of college, don't know nothing about people. Been working with people all my last 10 years, know nothing about them. Just ask me. My wife will too. But when boy, they believe everything that they tell themselves. They do. I want you, every battle that you go into this week, Every battle that you go into this week, you need to tell yourself that I am anointed. Let's say it together. I am anointed to accomplish the assignment God has given me. Amen. I am anointed to accomplish the assignment God has given to me. I, I, I just, I don't, I hear you saying it, but I don't feel any conviction. I don't think there's many people believing it. Amen. this week. You say that. Because God has anointed you, Christian, to accomplish whatever He has sent you out to do. He's already told you to go and tell others about Him. He's already told you to be a witness unto Judea, Samaria, and other uttermost parts of the world. He's already told you that. Have you accepted it? Have you accepted His anointing? Amen. Oh, so many people think that Christ is Jesus' last name. Jesus Christ. No, that's not Jesus' last name. Christ means anointed. The anointed one. Amen? That's what Christ means. He is the anointed one. And when you have Christ dwelling in you, if he's living in you, you're the temple. Okay, you know you're the temple. He's dwelling, he's living in you. Then how can you not be anointed? <coughs> oh, Christ in you. Amen. Oh, thank God. Oh, we see, as the truth of Christ is in me, the Apostle Paul said, no man shall stop me of this boasting of the region of Achaia or of Greece. We see, amen, Christ in is in me. Christ is in me. You keep telling yourself that. And you when you come to know him as Lord and Savior of your life, Christ is in you. Amen. Nothing can stop you because greater is he that's in me than he that's 
in the world. There's nothing that can come against you. It's going to come against you, but there's nothing that can beat you. Amen. Oh, thank God. John 17 and 23, in closing, I am them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. I am them. Christ. That's not Jesus' last name. Christ. I am them and thou in me, that, that, that they may be made perfect in one. With Christ, we can do great things. Amen. Many of you in here, how many of you got a Samsung Galaxy? Me, me. I got one. Okay, I'll have to take I got one. Do you remember how you, I remember you, me and my wife, we first got phones just like all twins. Take me some sweet honey. But uh, <laughs> we, you can bump your phones together and you can share information. You know? And you people that are eye slaves, it's got eye everything. Amen. You've got this thing called AirDrop now. And, and you can share information with the people that, that you want to. You know, you got to go through and you pick who you want. So, you know, I can turn my phone on. I can pick up everyone whose phone. And you got Bluetooth on, I'm on. I can share things with you. But here's the key, amen. With AirDrop and with Bump. Bump technology can be downloaded on anything now, by the way. But you've got to be close enough. It would be hard for me to share information with J.C. Ooh. He's too far away. Ooh. Ooh. See, he's not receiving. But, but you see, you've got to be close enough with bump technology or with airdrop. And you know, that's the same way it is with God. You've got to be close enough to Him. If you want to get a message from the Lord, if you want to get the unction or the anointing from God, you have got to be close enough to Him so that He can share it with you. Oh boy, it's getting a little too deep now. I better lighten up a little bit. But the Word of God tells us in James 4 and 8, 8, draw nigh to God. Get close to God. And He will draw nigh to you. He will get close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. If you're living in sin today, hey man, you need to cleanse your heart. You need to wash your hands. Where are you going to do it? You're going to do it right here on this altar. Amen. Hey man, maybe you're not receiving anything from God. Get closer to Him. Bump Him. Say, God, I want what you got. Amen. He'll transfer him power. To, boom. He'll, boom. Wow. He'll, he'll, you've got to be close to Him. You've got to be close to Him. That's what we all need to be. We need that personal relationship with Christ. We've got to be close. Brooke, if you'll come to piano musicians. We've got to be close to Him. Well, brother, you didn't even preach any of you. can't tell you I did. You want the anointing? You have to be close to Christ. You want all that God has to offer? You have to be close to Him. Amen. It doesn't matter what you look like in here. Look what God said. He's not looking on the outward appearance anyway. He's looking on the heart. Amen. Too many people are called up. Oh, that's a whole other message. Too many people are called up looking on the outward. God's looking on the inward. God's looking on the inside. He's not looking on the outside. He knows your heart. Some of these old Harley riders that was on that motorcycle ride yesterday, I bet they might have looked rough, especially after that long ride. Might not have looked like Christians. Might not have looked like months. Big old goatee and hair. <laughs> but to God, how beautiful soul is. God's looking on the heart. We judge people so quick. Oh, that's actually what I was going to preach on. Mm. Maybe that'll be next time. But God knows your heart today. You know your heart today. You know if you're saved, you know if you're lost. If you're here today and you're not saved, 
You need to draw nigh to God. You need to get close to Him. Let's all stand. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you need to come to know Him.